Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz and I'm back with the weather update. We're starting things off today looking at a pretty powerful cold front that swept through Western Australia. It's now moving into the Great Australian Bight and it's going to be bringing some heavy rainfall to areas around South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania over the coming couple of days. And we're going to be taking a look at a powerful cold front in the wake of that system that's going to be impacting a similar area, South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania later on this week into Thursday and Friday. We're also going to take a quick look at some heavy rainfall that's streaming in the shore around Coffs Harbour in the northern parts of New South Wales, which we'll take a quick peek at now because it is the current weather system. If you are brand new to the channel, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Your support is greatly appreciated. As I set up around Coffs Harbour in the northern parts of New South Wales, some heavy rainfall streaming ashore, and it has been the case over the past 12 hours where we have had some heavy falls moving through in the northern parts of New South Wales, extending from Newcastle right up through to uh, Coffs Harbour and Grafton, which has just started to pipe up in the last four or five hours or so, with no signs of slowing down either. We're looking at some very heavy rainfall up here as well, I'm just going to stop it on the latest radar frame. We're talking about rainfall rates here of around 10 to 12 millimetres an hour pretty consistently with isolated pockets up towards 25 millimetres an hour that are streaming in here and some heavier falls embedded in that as well. So areas around Coffs Harbour, Dorigo and up towards um, Grafton and Yamba expecting some heavy rainfall throughout the course of today. It is on the forecast models as we draw it back right now to what the Eastern BF has to say. It's not exactly what the radar imagery is saying but you can see a little bit of rainfall expected to be off shore uh, but in the case of this rainfall here it's well and truly onshore and it is quite heavy as well. Um, over the next 24 hours, the models haven't really picked up on the degree of the amount of rainfall. They're saying 25 to 50 or 60 millimetres offshore here, but I reckon the chance of a 100 millimetre accumulation somewhere around the hills around Grafton, I'm not 100% sure of the names of the hills around here. I know for the south of the Barrington Tops, um, but the around here, the hills around here, I'd not be surprised if an accumulation of 100 millimetres was recorded today. Um, just looking at the rainfall, it is really heavy rain. Right now. So for those around Grafton Coffs Harbour, just make sure you are being very vigilant for flood waters and big puddles today. Drive very safely on the roads. Uh, just the heads up, there could be some very heavy rainfall in the area but it should be easing off later on today. Uh, definitely by around lunchtime, the rainfall should be easing off uh, and it should be completely cleared out by this evening, just a couple of showers in the wake of that system. But yeah, zooming out uh, to the um, South Australia, Great Australian Bight picture, that's where the really significant weather is going to be. We've got a severe cold front that's moving through the Great Australian Bight at this time. It's already impacted the West Australian coastline with some heavy rainfall and also some damaging winds in one or two places as well. And you can see the back end of the shower pool streaming in between Albany across to Esperance at this time with some strong winds still. And what caught me off guard, I've been traveling up in the northwestern part of Western Australia through the Gascoyne up towards the Pilbara, uh, was the heavy rainfall that streamed in in the central parts of Western Australia as well. It's another 20, maybe 30 millimeters for some locations that they just don't need. The roads will certainly be closed up there and that's streaming into South Australia at this time with some heavy rainfall expected and possible across the western pastoral parts of South Australia into some of those big cattle stations and mining communities around Cooper Pedy, Minterby, um, and probably as far southeast as Roxby Downs as well throughout the course of today, but certainly the rainfall easing off uh, throughout the course of today around there. Um, but as we play this front uh, through, um, making its crossing of the coast around uh, Monday morning uh, between Sejuna and Port Lincoln early Monday morning, probably around 5 or 6 a.m. before impacting the Adelaide metro area around lunchtime or just before lunchtime, uh, before impacting the southern parts of the South Australian state with much needed rainfall. They desperately need uh, 20 or 30 millimetres there to kick off their agricultural seasons and start seeding, even though it is now well into late June. I mean, the seeding should have happened about a month or a month and a half ago, but they do still desperately need that rainfall. And some is certainly coming in the afternoon hours of tomorrow. Uh, it shouldn't be too heavy though, just a couple of showers sticking around the coastline, but they could be heavy in one or two locations and some strong winds as well in the back end of this cold front. You can see by Tuesday morning, wind gusts around the um, South Australia coastline, right up through the Air Peninsula, looking like they're going to be averaging around 60 to 70 kilometers an hour in the more mountainous terrains as well, even into 
uh, Victoria, they're going to be averaging higher towards uh, the red areas here, which is 65 kilometers an hour plus, maybe one or two spots in the mountainous areas that get towards 100 kilometer an hour wind gusts. And you can see that really expands through Tuesday. It's a slow moving weather system, and those heavy showers are going to be bringing some damaging winds throughout the course of Tuesday and Wednesday to the South Australia, Victoria, and Tasmania coastlines. Looks like Tasmania and Victoria in for a bit of a walloping throughout the course of Tuesday. Some very strong winds expected along the coastline. That'll, of course, equate to large wave heights in the Bass Strait, especially through the Furneaux Islands uh, and down in towards Tasmania as well. Uh, King Island expecting some really big waves as well, I've got to mention that. Um, it does look like the Bass Strait is going to be in for some very nasty and true winter weather by Wednesday morning as well. You can see these wave heights here averaging around three to five metres in height. Uh, probably going to be a little bit higher than what the forecast says as well by late Wednesday morning and into early afternoon before they do start to ease off as this weather system makes its passage through. But in terms of rainfall accumulation, very healthy falls expected over the next three days. I mean, around the Adelaide area, much needed 50 to 75 millimetres expected here. Um, especially in the southern suburbs, some very good rainfall. I mean, the forecast is saying up to 100 millimetres, and that might be a little bit bullish at this time, but 100 millimetres of rainfall over three days for the Adelaide metro area, I'm sure that would be a welcome amount. The agricultural uh, districts towards the southeast of Adelaide, however, not looking too lucky, unfortunately. Still some expecting a good 20 millimetres outside of Roba, north of Mount Gambia. There will be one or two places that pick up some good rainfall, but I mean, these communities here, they need a very good amount of rainfall to get themselves out of the drought conditions that they are in. I mean, we're looking at the drought intensity right now and we've got um, pretty extreme to severe droughts in a lot of places here, moderate to exceptional drought conditions extending across a lot of South Australia, uh, which hopefully will be easing off by later this week. I mean, you can see they do um, certainly ease off and dwindle a little bit with the passage of this rainfall, but it's just not enough, this rainfall, by the looks of it. They need a good 50 millimetres or so to really quash that drought-like conditions and possibly even more, and that's rainfall that's not really on the forecast at this time. Uh, Victoria expecting a good amount of rainfall, especially in the mountain belt that stretches across central Victoria and into the um, east of those mountains, expecting some very good rainfall around Mansfield and Omeo, up to 50 millimetres there, and some good snowfall expected too, that rainfall extending into New South Wales, some good rainfall for Tasmania as well, especially the northern coast, expecting up towards 100 millimetres of rainfall uh, through here around Devonport, across to Burnley, Stanley, and even inland towards Launceston, expecting a good helping of 30 millimetres of rainfall, much needed, that's for sure. On the west coast of Tasmania, extending from Arthur River to Strawn, Zeehan, Queenstown, and south to Strathgordon, expecting around 30 to 50 millimetres of consistent rainfall too. It's going to be that steady, uh, but not too heavy rainfall, which is fantastic news for the agricultural areas in the north um, and towns that need their dams filled up in the western parts of Tasmania. They really do need some rainfall there. Again, if we take a look at the drought map here, they are in that exceptional to extreme drought-like conditions across northern parts of Tasmania. Hopefully, though, they will be easing off um, as this week goes on and it'll just be the river valley outside of Hobart, the Derwent River Valley, that needs a lot of rainfall to quash the extreme drought conditions that are being experienced there. Um, but it does overall look like a pretty good forecast for some locations. It's not a complete problem solver for um, the southern parts of Australia. Victoria does need more rainfall. South Australia as well needs a lot more rainfall. And Tasmania also in places does need more rainfall. But overall, it does look like a good start um, in terms of rainfall. I did say that winter was going to be average to below average in terms of rainfall for Victoria, New South Wales and South Australia. It's definitely going towards the below average type of rainfall at this time. In fact, in some places, rainfall will only be half of what it normally is in the winter season. So a bit of a bad forecast. Um, uh, there, rainfall certainly going to be a lot below average in some locations, uh, but you never know. It only takes one front with 100 or 130 millimetres of rainfall to really shift the scales in terms of towards a good season. So we'll just keep on watching and keep on hoping for those agricultural communities. A lot of very good rainfall expected in the 10-day forecast. I did cite this when I was researching the video. Uh, I believe later next week and into early next weekend, Saturday, a big front sweeps across South Australia into Victoria and Tasmania with strong winds and very heavy rainfall as well. In fact, some uh, very heavy locally intense falls expected across New South Wales and into Victoria. Uh, this does look like it will be providing that widespread 50 millimetre rainfall that I was just describing. Uh, but it, again, it probably won't be enough to really bring them out of the drought conditions and kick off a great agricultural season for parts of Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. Uh, that's just unfortunately how it's looking like it's going to go. Uh, but this front will be sticking around in showers and cold conditions throughout 
start next weekend and into early next fortnight um, into as we start into early June is expected at this time uh, and some good snowfall as well I did cite this on the snow forecast up to 30 centimeters expected on the New South Wales highlands and widespread totals of around one to five centimeters through Tasmania parts in Victoria as well expecting some good snowfall I think this might be bogus snowfall here a centimeter or two outside of Ballarat Bendigo and up towards Horse, Horse Ham and Ararat uh, in Victoria I think don't think you can get snow down here, but the eastern blue earth is calling for it. I don't think it's reciprocated amongst the other forecast models. But once again, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not uh, really good with the snow forecast. It's certainly something that I'm working on here with these videos. Um, but in terms of other snowfall around the nation, um, as expected, absolutely zero. Sometimes you can get it from those powerful fronts in the northern parts of New South Wales, but it doesn't look like it's going to be on the forecast at this time. So shifting focus now to the west, we've got a bit of rainfall still streaming in around the coastal regions of Perth and down towards Albany and Esperance, uh, just remnants from that strong cold front that went through. The rainfall that was moving through central western Australia yesterday has since eased off, but I mean some big accumulations were recorded up to 30 millimetres for some locations, especially between Mount Magnet and Mika Thara, and I was driving right through it, and those road conditions are nasty. I've never seen the desert so green, and it does look absolutely beautiful up there, uh, but certainly going to be some road closures through the course of today and possibly as we get um, later on into this week. Of course, in the wake of this cold front, you're waking up to a very cold morning across the uh, central parts of Western Australia and the southwest. Uh, what's this Southern Cross at zero degrees right now, freezing morning down there and multiple low single digit recordings around uh, the agricultural districts in Western Australia through the wheat belt. And what's this wandering at two degrees right now, Lake Grace at five, uh, down towards Collie at three degrees and just starting to warm up now, but it's going to be a very cold start to today. And as far north as Leonora, six degrees there and the northern towns, Mount Magnet, 10 degrees, Lanista, 10 degrees as well. Very cold morning indeed. Um, but hopefully things do start to warm up a little bit throughout the course of today. That still will be a low teens to mid teens maximum, but hopefully things a little bit warmer than the freezing conditions that are being experienced there. Just going to go straight to rainfall accumulation. Some good rainfall is expected in the next five days. I believe Tuesday and Wednesday, we do have a bit of a weather system coming ashore to the Perth area. And that's that precursor system to the strong cold front that's expected next weekend for Eastern Australia. Um, but yeah, just taking a look at the weather forecast right now for that. Uh, by around, I think, Tuesday evening, we've got this strong cold front lining up the coast here. Really strong, actually. It's got some good thunderstorms in it, some very heavy showers. Uh, ahead of the cold front here and it's going to be a big one widespread up towards Geraldton and Calbarry with that heavy rainfall there damaging winds coming into the Perth metro area early Wednesday morning into early Wednesday afternoon it's going to be a very strong one that's for sure the heaviest rainfall will be between uh, Calbarry down towards Durian Bay including Northampton and Geraldton and inland towards Three Springs and Killani. Uh some good accumulation still expected up there I think they're going to have a bumper wheat season up there in the northern wheat belt they've had some very good rainfall with more on the cards as well well, um, but around the Perth metro area, I don't think rainfall is going to be too high from the initial cold front. Wednesday, probably only going to be about 15 millimetres with the passage of this weather system. But the shower pool behind it is going to be quite strong. And you can see this low pressure system racing towards the Perth metro area here. Uh, by Thursday morning and it looks like we're going to be in for some very wild weather Thursday morning into early Thursday afternoon as this low pressure area crosses the coast that is a very northern based front here and I'm just looking at how cold the conditions are likely going to be on the back end of this system snow lovers you might be in for a treat on the Stirling Ranges and maybe the Parongrups temperatures are going to be bitterly cold Thursday evening with a lot of rainfall and rain showers around and it looks like conditions might be good for a little bit of snow on top of the Stirling Ranges however I must warn you in a weather system like this, hiking conditions are going to be beyond hazardous. Winds will be in excess of 120 kilometers an hour. So make sure you only attempt it if you are a very experienced hiker and know exactly what you're doing because conditions in a storm like this will be very hazardous indeed. You can see storms still swirling around the Perth metro area until about Friday morning when they start to ease off. Still some showers expected right through to Friday evening. And I can tell you right now, next weekend it is going to be bitterly cold. Saturday morning, we're going to be waking to a freezing morning in a lot of the wheat belt and Perth will be quite close to freezing by the looks of things Saturday morning expecting a minimum of three degrees 
um, as per this forecast, oh no, five degrees as per this forecast, uh, still could get quite a bit colder around the Perth metro area in some locations, especially down towards Jandicott, making it freezing cold in the back end of these weather systems. As this weather system races off towards the Great Australian Bight to impact South Australia and Victoria, like I said, that cold pull will mean clear conditions throughout the course of early next week until the next cold front looks like it comes through late Tuesday or early Wednesday, the 3rd of July. So it looks like we might get five or six days of clear conditions for the southwest of Western Australia. Uh, but again, no promises there. It just looks like a pretty nasty cold front coming through Wednesday morning and then Thursday morning and into early Friday morning. It looks like we've got some very heavy showers and damaging winds coming through. Wind accumulation is likely going to mean wind gusts up towards 80 to 90 kilometers an hour. Um, around the Perth area and down towards the southwest capes, definitely up towards 90 kilometres an hour and some strong winds in the northern parts of the wheat belt as well, just the heads up there. Um, but overall, looking like a pretty pleasant forecast after that. We've got some fine conditions and just a bit of steady rainfall to top it off after that, shaping up to be an excellent winter for farmers in the southwest of Western Australia. But apart from that, that's basically all that I have time for this morning. I do hope you've enjoyed the weather forecast today. It's been a pleasure reporting to you again. I've missed making these videos. If there's anything that I've missed or uh, you feel like I've missed out on something, then please do leave it in the comment section down below. Special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their name's on the screen right now with a beautiful recording of the sunrise at Wurramil River uh, yesterday morning. It was absolutely stunning. It was before the rain set in uh, north of Murchison there. Um, an absolutely gorgeous sunrise, one that I'll remember for a long time. Uh, and yeah, a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Could not run this show without them and their support has been greatly appreciated. If you too want to get your name mentioned at this part of the video, then click the join button as well. But that is all from me. Make sure you like and subscribe to, uh, to the channel as well for more daily weather updates. I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.